The Environment Secretary, Owen Paterson, has denied the Badger Cull trial in Somerset was a failure, but has told BBC Spotlight that the Badgers moved the goalposts. The government says that although it didn't meet its original target for the number of badgers killed, it's still happy with the way the trial was conducted and is considering an application to extend it. Welfare groups have argued the cull has failed to meet any of its aims. We'll hear from the Secretary of State in a moment after this report from our environment correspondent, Adrian Campbell. This farm is right on the edge of the Devon-Somerset border. Over there is the Wellington Monument. The cattle here, pedigree highland cattle, have thus far stayed free of bovine TB. But the farmer says it's an ever-present risk. Graham Wallace says the cull is sad but necessary. I think it's always very difficult to, to make a start. Um, I think they had to get going with it. Uh, maybe the results aren't what they anticipated, um, but I think in time they've made a good start. DEFRA says that 850 badgers were shot over a six-week trial in Somerset. That's just 40% of the original target figure of 2,081. DEFRA had set itself a target of killing 70% of the population, but it says badger numbers are lower than predicted. There were thought to have been around 2,400 in West Somerset, but that's now been revised downwards to 1,450, which means in effect the cull companies don't have to shoot so many badgers to meet the targets set by DEFRA. They've had to move the goalposts because the numbers are a bit disappointing. Um, but I, I think maybe we get a bit hung up on the numbers. I think the results are the important thing. But Somerset Badger Group says the trial cull results show it's failed to meet the target. We are in a situation where they don't really know how many there are, yet they've determined a figure which they assume equates to 70%. There doesn't appear to be any allowance for the uh, seasonal changes in badger populations. There doesn't see any allowance in terms of the fact we've had a very dry spring and we see low cub recruitment numbers. We've got lesser badgers than in a typical year. The National Farmers Union says the cull results may not be perfect, but the government is doing the right thing. They've taken a brave step. They've overturned 20 years of political procrastination and inactivity, which has led us to the chronic situation we're in now with 38,000 cattle slaughtered last year, a disease out of control, and the danger of Europe making us into some sort of isolation zone and effectively shutting down farming. Many anti-cull campaigners say they support farmers, but think a cull simply can't work. Adrian Campbell, BBC Spotlight, Wellington. Well, earlier I spoke to the Environment Secretary, Owen Paterson. I asked him why he considered the cull to be a success. I'm very satisfied that we've proved that in Somerset that this method is safe. On humaneness, the overwhelming evidence coming back is that the badgers have been shot cleanly and have died very quickly in a humane manner. And I think that's very important for the future. And on effectiveness, uh, they've achieved in six weeks uh, 60% of the current numbers and our chief vet is absolutely clear that that will lead to a significant reduction in disease. What you describe there as success, the critics will argue, has been a failure on all levels. You didn't estimate the number of badgers in the area correctly in the first place. You haven't reached the 70% target of killing badgers that you set yourself at the beginning of this. Now the trial has to be extended. You're moving the goalposts on all fronts. No, that's not right at all. The badgers have moved the goalposts. You're dealing with a wild animal. The, it's a wild animal subject to the vagaries of weather and disease and breeding patterns. If you're saying you now have to factor in the vagaries of the badger population to the trial, doesn't that make the trial itself pointless? Because that's going to change every year. You could never set yourself a target that you know you're going to meet if the badger population, you say, is changing year by year. Well, of course it'll change every year. You're dealing with a wild animal living under wild conditions. Therefore, how can you say at the start of a trial, we want to kill this many badgers in this time frame, when you don't know from year to year how many badgers are in that area? How can you ever judge it as a success? Because we have skill guys on the ground who are good at coming up with an accurate estimate according to the very latest evidence available to them. So they took this evidence, the physical evidence, very shortly before the cull began and came up with the current number. The whole idea of this cull, of course, has been to see if, if this would be successful enough to be rolled out to other parts of the country. 
Experts, including Krebs, have said in the past, if you don't kill enough badgers in a cull zone, there's this danger of perturbation. The badgers with the disease will spread to clean areas. What happens if that is the case here? I think it's very sensible of the company to ask for an extension to go on for two to three more weeks, because you're quite right. If you can get more in a disease hotspot area, that will be helpful. And, and in terms of judging it as a success, it, it sounds like you've already decided it is, regardless of what the final outcome of the trial will be. Is it going to be rolled out across the country, regardless of how this trial ends? No, absolutely not. There are quite clearly a lot of lessons to be learned from this. But uh, the preliminary evidence is very clear that we have been successful on safety. Or not we, the guys on the ground have been successful. Uh, successful on humaneness and successful on effectiveness. Getting 60% is a clear endorsement from our chief vet. So I'm very happy to say this is a successful operation. But obviously we could always do better and there will be real lessons to be learned. And I look forward to reading the report from the independent evaluators in due course. OK, Owen Patterson, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, responding to the minister's comments, the Exeter MP Ben Bradshaw said he'd always been sceptical that the coal could reach its target and feared it could make matters worse. It seems to go from one disaster to another when it comes to Owen Paterson. They've lost half the badger population of Somerset, it would seem. Have these badgers moved out of the culling area? Are they therefore spreading the disease to the surrounding areas? The farmers in those areas are not going to be very happy about that. And my worry is that after all of this, we'll have a lot of dead and injured badgers for absolutely no benefit for our farming community.